All right, good evening, everyone. And I want to thank everyone for coming. Tonight we have a dual topic. We have honor, honoring Black History Month. And then we also have independent people inside of relationships. Um, I, I have been looking forward to these two topics for a while. I understand and I do know that it's going to uh, ruffle some feathers, um, challenge some people's beliefs. Um, and that is, our, that is our objective. It's always our objective to help people grow, give people information, whether it's coming from you to us or us to you. You know, it's about, you know, um, preparing ourselves with the tools that we need in order to make a, be a better person and make a better life for ourselves and anyone else that we are helping. Um, tonight, before we get started, I want to also remind everyone about Ms. Carm Dr. Carmen Johnson's petition. We have seen an increase in numbers, but we're still asking that people share and sign their petition. And we definitely need your help. You know, things are progressing and we thank you for that. We acknowledge you and thank you for that. However, we ask that we, uh, once again, if you see the petition, hit share again, because we may share it to somebody that haven't seen it. Um, with that being said, what I wanna do is dive into this topic. We're gonna start off with the actual Black History Month and what we're going to do. We have chosen three people that we're gonna give some facts about you know, um, give a little brief synopsis of this individual. And the, these individuals are individuals that have been incarcerated at some point and that have, have came out and done tremendous things after being released from prison. You know, our objective is to let people know that, you know, don't get discouraged because we go to prison or you go to prison or you have a family member in prison, they can come home and do great things. A lot of people on this panel is are living examples of this, you know, so, you know, we have chosen three people in each one of us, speaking of myself, uh, uh, the staff of the Reinvention Center are going to choose a different, we have chosen different people to speak on. Myself, I'm speaking on Nelson Mandela. Um, Lisa Riley is going to speak on Malcolm X and Maurice Clifton is going to speak on Mar uh, uh, Marcus Garvey. You know, all individuals, once again, that have been incarcerated and that have came home and done phenomenal things. There are many other people out there that have done it. Um, and we can, at some point in the future, continue to um, choose one person and highlight one person that have um, that has been incarcerated and has come home and done phenomenal things. We do not have to wait till just February, the month of February, to honor people that deserve to be honored, what, regardless of their race or, or 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 anything. You know, we we just want to um, acknowledge and give people that let people see the the hope and uh, how this, this can actually happen. Um, before I start, I'm gonna allow Miss Miss Riley to introduce herself and, and give more about the things that she does as far as with her organization, and then we're gonna go from there. Okay, thank Hello, you. I am Lisa Riley, and uh, I'm part of the Reinvention Center, but also I have a group, Rick and Silence. A lot of you guys see me on. Um, and uh, I want to tell you that the 3rd, March 3rd, is the last day for people that are listening, uh, people that may not know. I have a birthday fundraiser up um, on Facebook. Thank you, everyone that donated. Now, I do want to say this. All your donations get split up three ways for Breaking Silence, the Reinvention Center, and Sale Sippy. So I wanted to say that, um, put it out there. Now, when that comes down on the third, I will have a new fundraiser coming, which will be, I have, I was just looking around here, a um, gift certificate to a car detailing. You get your car cleaned on the outside, detailed on the inside. And we'll talk more about that later. But um, not the max. So excited, I've been so excited all day. I get excited. First, I want people to know, and I, well, I want to encourage everyone, there is a Malcolm X movie on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, please take time to watch it. it it's, it's really, really educational. There's a lot of things on there that if you didn't know, you will know. But um, Malcolm X, you know, he came from, I got some notes, so that's what I'm glancing at. 
he's from uh, Nebraska. And then he, uh, when he was a child, he was born in Nebraska. Then he moved to the Midwest with his family. Uh, family life wasn't so great. His father committed suicide, but they really didn't think, they thought there was some shady stuff going on with that suicide. So uh, it was alleged. Um, so he dropped out of school as a child. And then, uh, you know, he, he was on the streets. He had to survive. You know, a lot of us understand that. I understand that. I get it. But um, he did a lot of things. He, he was a shoe shiner, did some gambling, was a drug dealer for a little bit. And then he actually went to jail for burglary, but breaking into homes, breaking into things. Um, he did 10 years in prison. And while he was in prison, he continued his education. He, had, uh, he has a brother and his brother had told him about the uh, religious group Nation of Islam. And that's how he began and he was introduced to becoming a Muslim, changed his life. Um, I read time and time and even on a Netflix, it changed his life and at that time, he knew he wanted to change his life around and become a better person. Um, and, and in prison, while he was in prison, he had followers and he was uh, learning and teaching and, and just trying to do uh, the best he could. Now, right before he came home, he changed his name. You know, his name wasn't always the, the Malcolm X. Um, but, but I thought this was really interesting that I want to share with people that, um, you know, for people that doesn't know a lot about Malcolm X and um, the reason he chose that letter X is because that many, uh, when there was slaves, many of the slaves were marked with that letter X on their upper arm. And, um, and that's why he chose that letter X in his name. I thought that was really interesting. Um, he was also a minister. And um, so when he came home, he, he was just doing wonderful. You know, we know how powerful he was. Uh, he stood for education and he stood uh, for, he wanted to end the unfairness of the racist laws. He, he wanted equality for blacks in, in the American in America and the right for uh, everyone to vote. And, uh, and, and he, he just wanted people to be treated as human beings. And, um, and you know, he spent some time, he went to Mecca and, uh, and Saudi, Saudi Arabia. And when uh, he went over there, it changed his views a little bit. And when I say that just a little bit, you know, uh, he wanted the same thing for everyone, all people. You know, uh, Malcolm X didn't discriminate against anyone. He wanted all this stuff for everyone. He truly did. Uh, and, uh, you know, now I'm going to give you my opinion that's got me all riled up, if it's okay, that Malcolm X was a powerful individual. He, he, he was a man of God. He loved people and he wanted people to do the right thing. And, and he, he wanted good things for a lot of people. He, he just want fairness and it should have been, it should be today, but we know with racism, it, it, it tends not to be. So um, he was too strong and, and the government, the government seen that and they tried to bring him down and they sure did because he's not here today. But um, one thing that, that got me upset is that I did a little research search is that the three men that went to jail for his death did not commit his death, did not kill him. The one there, they did 20 years in prison and the government the, the FBI, the police, the people stood by and watched these people spend 20 years of their life and they were completely innocent, 
Now that happened back then and they're still doing it. They're still doing it today. People are, the government is still standing back. The, the judges, the police, they're still put, putting people in prison today that are innocent. So it, it just, it, it got me all thinking about a lot of different things about how still today um, that we gotta keep fighting. We gotta keep fighting. We gotta come together and, and we have to do what's right for people that are incarcerated, the wrongfully incarcerated, and uh, and just do what's right. You know, I, I think too often people just turn the other way and, and it gets too tough. And they don't, people don't wanna go the tough road. So there's my little message on Malcolm X. <laughs> I definitely appreciate your contribution tonight. Um, and I definitely appreciate that. And I would encourage people to, to look at that movie as well, Malcolm X. It's very informative, um, great entertainment, but true, truthful information. So uh, again, thanks for your, your contribution. And I look forward to your contribution on part two of this show. Um, moving on, I would like to go to Mr. Maurice Clifton and then be a rapper with myself. Um, always good to hear this brother speak here. Um, how you doing, Mr. Clifton? That's how you doing, huh? What's up, James? How y'all doing? I, I, everybody, how y'all doing? Uh, I'm Maurice Clifton from Sale, Mississippi. You know, y'all know me. I started my own advocacy agency, agency after getting out last year in January, you know, because of some of the hardship I faced. So it's a Sippy's Advocacy Initiative and Leadership, you know, acronym for SAIL. My YouTube channel is SAIL with Sippy. You can see the reinvention centers, uh, videos, as well as some of the live doc, you know, live stuff that I do in the community on there. Tonight, I'm talking about Marcus Garvey. You know, a lot of people don't know about Marcus Garvey. You know, he's one of those lost treasures in black history. You know, even though probably because he was born in Jamaica and he ended up coming over here, I think it was like 1914 or something, but he started what they call the Universal Negro Improvement Agency. And, and what he believed was black independence during the, you know, when we had Jim Crow in the South and everything going on with us in the South, he was preaching black independence. You know, he came to uh, America and started his uh, part of his UNI, one of his UNI offices in Harlem, in Harlem doing the, what they call the Harlem Renaissance. You know, when black people were thriving in New York, man, we had the, our political people like the talented tent with W.E. Du Bois, all of, all of those people were in opposition of what Marcus Garvey was preaching because he was saying, hey man, we can take our money and buy black, spend black, he was preaching Black independence financially and uh, just civilly and everything, holistically back then in the 20s. So with him doing that, all the people who were fighting for segregation, like I say that, that uh, uh, W.E. Du Bois, who was one of the, the, the premier activists during that time, they were in opposition against him. And so he started, what he did, he started the Black Star Line which was the shipping agency that took people, he was trying to get the back to Africa movement. Hey man, we even though we built this country, we don't need this country. All of us can pack up and go to Africa and start our own community there. You know what I mean? So he was preaching the back to Africa movement back then. And so a lot of people who didn't really understand what he was saying, thought that he was crazy, but a lot of people invested in him, but he just didn't have the right people financially around him. Therefore, he got caught up with the feds came in and done. You know, when we go against the grain, I like him because he spent time in the federal prison in Atlanta, right? That same one in Atlanta, man. I always think about, you know, when I used to go through the, the, the holding facility in Atlanta, man, what, where was Marcus Garvey? Because it's the same one that was there, you know, when Capone was there and when he was there, when he did time. He spent two years there in, uh, in Atlanta, Atlanta USP. When he came out, what they did was they deported him. They deported him back to Jamaica. He ended up moving to uh, he ended up moving to London, where he ended up dying. But the biggest thing about him, man, I think that uh, he wanted to ensure that we had black racial purity by us not race race mixing. You know, during that time, you're talking about in the 20s, man. You're talking about when it, when the Ku Klux Klan was on the rise. You're talking about when Jim Crow was getting his foothold. When Jim Crow was had a, a big hole on the South. When you're talking about when the, 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 the porters and 
in New York were going through their thing, what they was talking about striking and everything, but everybody was talking about us becoming segregated, yet and still he was talking about, hey man, we need to spend our money with us. You know, we, we create our own money. You know, we got a bunch of millionaires here in Harlem and all over, the, you know, the Northeast and stuff. You know, what? because that's where it was in New York. You had Madam C.J. Walker and, and Claude McKay and so many others, Zora Neale Hurston and all these people, man. They were prominent people in New York during this time, during this Harlem Renaissance period. So what they did, like I said, they came in and indicted him for mail fraud, ended up giving him two years, man. They never let him get his foot back on the ground. I think it's... His Black Star line he ended up going under because of financial difficulties. Because a lot of the uh, he couldn't meet the deadlines while he was in prison, so he didn't have the right people in place. What I really like about this brother, man, he's like a Jamaican hero and an African hero. He's the one who brought the Rasta Rastafarianism to the United States. You know what I mean? With with Haley Selassie and everybody. So that was his that was his thing. You know, the Black Power. He was the original Black Power movement long before other. American born people began to really speak out about it. And so that was the thing. He's the, the reason that we have what they call the pan Africanism movement, where you see the red, green, and black flag. And so I just think that a lot of people, um, you know, forget that he started the People's Political Party. You know, he started so many other organizations that people don't, that, that they don't even realize when they see the, the African flag flying. He's the, he's the reason that we see it over here the red, black, and green flag. You know, I think they added the yellow later on for friendship but he's the originator of the Pan-African movement. And so he don't get a lot of credit, man, because I guess because of his, his uh, opposition against the norm and how people, how people, how I can say docile people, you know, they were afraid at the time. They were thinking that his, his rhetoric and his talk was going to get a lot of us killed. Going, you, know, you know, he was doing this when the Black Wall Street, when they were bombing Black Wall Street. He was doing this when they was, uh, long before, you know, they 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 uh, put the National Guard on us at Kent State. So he was going against the grain. You know, here's a Jamaican coming over here, going against the grain, telling people, hey, man, we can be a strong nation, but, you know, we can go back to Africa. We don't have to, you know, slavery over. We can go to Africa and start our own race, build our own thing. We got the same thing. Start our own factions and everything and become a great nation again. We can make Africa a great nation with the long lost souls of her children, you know, from generation to generation of slavery. So that's why I like him. He ended up dying June 10th. I think it was uh, 1940, he was 53 years old. You know, it's a shame. I've never seen a movie about him. You know, you see a few documentaries out, but, and that's the thing, you know. I sure hate going after you. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that, brother. Uh, you know, I forgot this was your thing. I should have, I should have went first. You know, I, how can I top that? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You know, you, you um, got a powerful character. Hey, man, you got a powerful that's person. Listen, I sure hate. I, hey, that's my bad. That won't happen no more. I learned from that right there. I forgot that you used to teach Black History Month inside the joint. You know. Uh, oh know, yeah, every. It's 365, not not just not just February. Right, right. I just say I forgot that. You know, I forgot <laughs> that. you know, I don't know what I'm thinking. Guys. You got an old old blues singer going behind the scholar. You know, I don't understand how that's gonna work out. But you know, let me move on though. Let me move on. I definitely appreciate your contribution, brother. Um, very important information. I hope that everyone goes and looks more into Marcus Garvey because you said he is a remarkable guy. Um, he's done a lot, and a lot of people, and he's 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 like um he's like the trash man. You know, um, he, he does an important job, but he's underappreciated, you know, because uh, we didn't have trash men, you know, we come out there and say, ah, we see trash everywhere, how will we feel? You know, so we need to, you know, like I said, he's like them, but in a sense, in the greater sense, not in the greater sense, but in, in, in a great sense. Um, what I'm going to do is move along. You know, I didn't do it as a thorough back uh, uh, investigation as Mr. Clifton did. We definitely all know uh, Nelson McDowell. I want to start off by saying that um, Nelson was not his original name when he was born. That name was given to him by one of his um, school teachers, primary school teachers. Uh, after um, we're going to skip some years because we want to get to the second topic and we want to get you know get to that. We can all we're going to do, always implement this in the show from now on. We're going to give at least one person that came out of jail did something great and come back to. So you know, please you know don't you know just keep that in mind. The next thing I want to do is, is he started, you know, Nelson Mandela began his long road to college degree at the University College of Fort Hare in 1931. He was expelled for participating in a 
protest against the university's policies. And um, he eventually, he, against the university policies. He eventually received his law degree from the University of South Africa in 1989. Uh, during his last months of imprisonment, Nelson Mandela was honored, received honorary, honorary degrees from more than 50 universities in his last months of incarceration. 50 universities, uh, you know, um, that's definitely a, 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 a great feat. After leaving the University of Fort Hare, the king of the village that he lived in threatened him and one of his cousins of making up a makeshift marriage for him and his cousin. So they flee the village and he, that, that is how he ended up in Johannesburg um, to avoid the marriages. He, along with a fellow ANC member named Oliver Tambu, established South Africa's first black law practice in 1952. His practice primarily worked on challenging apartheid laws, including South Africa's past laws, which required non-white citizens to carry documents authorizing their presence in restricted areas. In order to leave the country, which he was banned from doing, he at one time used some fake documentations to get in and out of South Africa in secrecy. His act, he continued, he continued to, his, to, act, to be an activist while he was in prison. And he mentored other prisoners, taught them about nonviolent resistance. He also sent notes to the outside world and was consistent, a consistent symbol for the anti-apartheid movement. You know, this gentleman did not only just go to jail and just lay down, stop, and just say, hey, I'm doing time, moat, wine, and cry. You know, he got involved in, you know, helping people grow and getting people to doing the things that they needed to do. He was released from prison in 1990 by prison, by, um, and, and um, I, this is something that I wasn't aware of. He advocated for HIV AIDS for one of his sons who passed away from AIDS-related AIDS illness. The years he was elected, the year he was elected president of South Africa was also the first year he ever voted in an election in 1994. He was 76, 76 years old when he died. Let me give you a few more facts about Mr. Mandela. He was the president of South Africa from 1994 to 1999, and he was the first black president of South Africa. And he was the first president to be elected in a fully representative election. Nelson Mandela's government focused on destroying the apartheid government in the country, which had focused on racial segregation enforced by the law. And In 2009, the United Nations proclaimed Mandela's birthday, July 18th, to be Nelson Mandela International Day. The holiday asked people to spend 67 minutes doing something good for others, which represent the 67 years he spent working toward change. There's no question that this gentleman here was a remarkable guy. And we and we and I would love to have to follow his footsteps or to have other, other people follow his footsteps. You know, um, definitely this is something that I feel that we need to do, Lisa and Maurice, I'm speaking to y'all and everybody else. If anybody else would like to pick a person and bring them whenever they want to, feel free to do so. I don't, don't feel that it's just us. We just wanted to start it off because it was something that was new, but I feel that this is something that we need to continue doing so we can figure it out. Next time I come, I can assure you I will be more prepared to miss the dinner, um, the gentleman down here before him. Boy, I tell you, the blues singer. Uh, definitely <laughs> will. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, def with that being said, I definitely would like to thank y'all for doing the research you've done, looking at the thing and bringing what you brought. Um, we're going to move on into part two of this tonight's show, which is independent people in a relationship. Now, what I would like to do is first, and give me one second while I do this. First thing I would like to do is give the definition of independent. Um, there's multiple definitions for words. We all know that, but I'm going to give you a few of them. Um, it says free from outside control, not dependent on another's authority, not dependent on another for livelihood or subsistence. Um, to me, independent, based on this here, 
independent mean that, um, or let me read this here, an independent person or body. That means that you're doing things by yourself. You're not depending on no one. Um, you're, you're, you're making things happen by yourself. Um, this topic here is one that I wanted to go into because I feel that I hear a lot of women say that they're independent. I hear a lot of people say they're independent, particularly women. More, I hear more women than men say this, and I'm not picking on you women. I just want to, you know, make a point um, that I'm independent, you know. Um, and the thing that strikes me with that is the women that normally say that are, in, are, are, are women that are in relationships, either they're married or they're in a monogamous relationship or they're some form of union or something, you know, and that, that baffles me because I'm saying, how can you be in a, codependent in a relationship, but be independent in, uh, by yourself, you know, by yourself that those two just don't add up to me. You know, um, I will say that, um, I encounter that, you know, on my job and in different places where people are saying they're independent, but, you know, no one is doing nothing by themselves, you know, with the definition of independent, meaning, in, you know, you're not relying on anyone, no authority, no nothing. My question, my first question would be, is it possible to be independent and be in a codependent relationship? Miss Riley, I want to ask you that first. I'm going to start with you. Then, Miss Scott, you can think of your answer because you look like you're thinking wrong. Well, I'm gonna talk. <laughs> oh, okay, now your question was, uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat and that one? To be independent and be in a relationship, which is something that's based on merging and codependency. Wow. I, you know, oh, that that is tough because if you're in a relationship, yeah, you're codependent. It which kind of take a well, you know, what I'm I'm saying, unless I'm gonna learn something new tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um I I think if you're you're in a serious relationship um that's gonna lead to marriage, um um and this is your mate, you know, that you want to be a partner with, and, and we use those type of terms it kind of eliminates that independency. If you're in a relationship, it eliminates the fact that you, because you're supposed to be codependent in a relationship. You're supposed to be codependent. And now you're referring to, to uh, the other person as your partner, your other half, your significant other. You know, um, independence to me states that, you know, I'm an individual of one. So, uh, no, I, I don't think I, I'm, if I'm in a serious relationship that I use those terms about this person, I think it takes away that independent word. Not to say that I'm not strong or, or I can't do things on my own, but um, I, I think at that point, I have to have equal amount of respect and consideration to my partner. You know, so no, I, I would say no, I'm not independent. Okay. Um, before I go to Miss Scott, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this up. I'm going to do one female, one male. So um it's not as if you know we're balancing. Go ahead, Mr. Clifton. <laughs> Are you know all right? <laughs> go yeah, ahead, you're yeah, Asian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, ask the question again for Miss Jane. I wanna just absorb it. I wanna absorb it. Okay, the question <laughs> is can a independent be in a relationship which is based on codependency. Of course, because if you if you if you love a person enough, then you don't want to box them in anyway. Because you you have people who are in a relationship. You even though you're merging lives, you still have two two independent people, two individuals merging your lives. There are things that she may like to do that I may not like to do. There are so, things that she may want that she may want to do alone. Okay, so when you're saying merge. You know, merge then means that you're not by yourself no more. That means you become one. I understand, but it doesn't okay. mean that I'm dependent. It doesn't mean that I'm dependent on her for the things that I want to do. Nor is she dependent on me for the things that she likes to do. What's wrong with yeah. that? That's what the codependent. Oh, there's no, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. That's what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with it. But but love, but coming together is is loving her enough to respect the things that she want to do, as long as it doesn't do it's financially financially or, or independent. She might want to take a trip and say, hey, I want to take a girl's trip. You know what I mean? 
well, hey, I, I, you know, I want to go shopping. I want to do this for myself with my money. You know what I mean? It's not, it's, you know, even though we, we, you know, we like to think people, we put so much emphasis on, on coming together uh, as one to where we, we literally choke, we literally choke our loved one out with the thing. It's like suffocating. You know what I mean? You got to, leave, you got to leave the box open and leave the room open so that they can do the things that they want to do without, because one thing about it, if they love you enough, then they're going to start wanting to do things with you, for you, and by you. You know what I mean? They're going to become your better whole, not your better half. You're going to be equal as one. It's, it's the merging. It's, it's, when they said two becoming one, it's, it's the merging. So, I, you know, I don't, you know, finances have destroyed a lot of uh, relationships. People wanting to do things there uh, on their own has destroyed a lot of relationships when the other person don't understand that. People just assume magically when I say I do that, I'm supposed to stop being the person that, that I am or she's supposed to stop being the person that she is. Love is, love, love, true love is understanding that she's still that same person that I fell in love with before I proposed to her, before we got married. That's and so I don't, I don't, I don't want to change her. Okay, I love I her. Just, that. Just yeah, go ahead. Okay, I definitely agree with you. I'm not looking to change anybody. When I get with somebody, I accept and I like who they are and what they bring to the table. I feel that that person at that point is someone that I can merge with and we can work good as a team because a marriage is a team. There is not one individual on a football team, basketball team, or nothing that does everything by themselves and be successful. Um, LeBron James tried that with Cleveland for a couple of years when he came in. Michael Jordan is the best one in the world, but he still had great other, other great people around him. So it was a team. It had to be a collective effort. It can't be an independent effort, meaning where you're doing things by yourself. I kind of feel, and I'm going to say this right quick, and then I'm going to let you go back, that we were going to go into this area where, okay, of course she's supposed to have her own job. Of course she's supposed to have um, different things. But, you know, um, I'm not saying that she's supposed to just automatically do what I want her to do. That's not the case. What's supposed to happen is when you are single, you are independent. When you become in a relationship, you become codependent, meaning you two should sit down and come up with some goals, some objectives, and some things that y'all are working toward. Now, whatever she do, whatever her role is in that relationship, I'm not going to interfere with that because I chose her because this is where she's good at. You see what I'm saying? So, I'm, you know, this may not be an area that I'm good at. So I'm not saying that um, I'm going to just smother out and say, hey, my way is this way and none of that type of stuff there. But what I am saying is that um, she's going to be better in some areas than I'm going to be in, and I'm going to be some better in some areas that she's in. And together, we should be able to come and, and, uh, and accomplish our goals, respect each other enough to follow, allow, I'm, I got to follow her when she's the better, the better person in that area, and she has to follow me when I'm the better person in that area. Now, so now my point is, I'm not saying that I'm trying to change her. I'm trying to grow with her. But if you're working independent of me, if you're over here and I'm over here, we're not working together. That's all I'm saying. So now I'm saying you can't be independent, separated, and then say that we're we're codependent or or merged or a team. That doesn't work that way. But go ahead, sir. That's just my opinion. See, see, you took you took a sports analogy where let's okay. It says now I'm gonna give you a sports analogy. Okay. When when when. When my home, when my home is about to get sacked, when his D line, when his offensive line has failed, when he shakes a guy or slips a tackle and they can't get him down, that all his blockers missed it. When he when he jumped three or four people and get down the sideline and shake a tackle, his whole D line failed. He's he's running for his life now. And he ends up scoring a seven yard touchdown on his own. Yeah, it's a team of twelve. Hold on. And I, I got a brother got his head up. Got a brother got his head up. Yeah, he's going okay. on his own because the other ten people walk off the field and say, "Now do that by yourself." And with no blocking, what about the people that's blocking down the field from the wide receivers and the stuff that's taught to block down the field? See, so, so yeah. that yeah, so that means he's never independent. You know what I'm saying? He just made an independent move, which is his strength. His exactly. Strength listen to what you just said. Let me listen to what you said. Listen. He made. Listen to what you just said. He made an. I'm, I'm listening. Go ahead. He, he made an independent move. So, okay. so if 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 my spouse wants to make an independent move, then I have no problem with that. I now, as long agree as, on as, that. As long, as, long as agree on that. Let's agree on that. Wait a minute. As long as this, as long as it's in the confines and respect of our relationship, as long as she doesn't disrespect me 
disrespect me or I disrespect her by doing things on on my own. You see what I'm saying? So, okay, I'm saying this here. I'm hearing what you're saying. And I say this again. Mahone made an independent move when he shook that blocker. I say independent because he was by himself. But the independent move was for the betterment of the the whole scheme of the relationship. You see what I'm saying? And he, he now after after he made that independent move because he was forced to do that, and that's his strength. Why, why was he forced to do that? Because that's his strength. Because no, no, no. Why was he forced to do that? Why was he forced to do that? Yeah. Because the people that he, who was working in concert with him, because he was never doing it by himself. Right. Let, was, let him. Oh, I'm trying to let this brother in because he got, got, got another brother. But uh, uh, the people that were working in concert with him. Let him down. Okay. Okay. So that means they wasn't working with him or that means that wasn't their strength. No, they, were working with, they, they were working with him. So they, just got beat, they, they got beat by circumstance. Okay. So the, whole, the whole scheme was supposed to be he had time to complete the pass downfield. Okay. That but, didn't happen. Right. Because, because his, his front five let him down. The tight end missed a block. The D line missed the block. The pulling guard slipped and fell, and his man is coming through. Now, now he's running for his life. So that makes him independent. No, no, that doesn't make him independent. I'm saying, I, I never said it made him independent. I said he made him. Because I got somebody in the background hollering that he independently running for his life. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so that's why I want to. Well, he's independent when they miss them blocks, then, right? <laughs> no, they force him to become independent. Okay. So they now that means, okay, that's his linesman. Yeah. That's his linesman. Right. The, the tight end. Let's say the tight end in the center missed their block, right? Right. What about the tackle? The right and left tackle. What about the receiver? Right what about a, 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 no, no, no matter how good they could have pancaked that man, he's still yeah. running for his life. He's still yeah. running for his life from the tight end. Let me get back to this. We're here. Okay, yeah. let's agree with this here. <laughs> At no time is no eleven people on the field working in. Uh, uh, but we're talking about a we're talking about a relationship. There's two okay, people, now, and at no time should two people be working by themselves. Um, at, at anything. Now, again, when I say by themselves, independent means you're not dependent on nobody. You see what I'm saying? You're yeah. doing it with no authority. Uh, Alex, unmute yourself because I know you next, and then John, I know you want to jump in because he had his hand up before you. Hey, uh, let, let, hey John, let, hey Boosie, let me give him this analogy right here. <laughs> let's let's take sports out of it. Okay. Let's take two. Let's take let's take two highway. Let's just say. Let's just say uh, 95. Give me two highways that run the same way. They run alongside each other in uh, in, 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 in uh, Miami. Uh, in Miami, I'm going to say uh, 75 and 95. No, I'm talking about they run together for a long period of time. You know how? You know how? We don't have that. We don't have huh? that. Oh, yes, you do. Every city got it. Yeah, well, tell Every me where it's at then, brother. I'm glad you said that. Tell me where okay. it's at then, brother. Matter of fact, it's Matter of fact, let's just say we're gonna come up through Atlanta. We're gonna take uh seventy five and eighty five. Where they run together before they split. Okay. It's like when, just like when IT get to El Paso, but they run together for forty miles. They're two individual highways. They're two individual Hold highways. Hold on one second, Mr. Jones, you here? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, do you know any hot? Can you answer that question for him? He said two uh, two highways that run together for a while that merge off of each other. You know, maybe you can help me out with this because you ain't Miami president. Actually, we don't have what you're talking about, Mr. Clifton. We have something like that. Derek, you know, 7th Avenue or 27th Avenue is university, university, university. We have stuff like that there where this turns into that. It's the same highway, but it turns into that. University is really 27th Avenue, Derek. 7th Avenue is, or Biscayne is US 1 when it gets to this portion right here. It's really Biscayne Boulevard from this street to this street. Then when it gets to that street, it's called US 1. Once you go over this thing, we don't have two independent 85, 95s because we we just we just have one. 95 is 95. They they may uh intersect or converse at a four. When, 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 they, when they intersect, when they intersect, which one is which? Which one is to the left? Which one to the right? When they intersect, which one is to the left? Which one to the right? Okay, listen to what I've said. When they intersect, that means it crosses over. It's just still 75. But when they merge. I'm, I'm gonna find it though. I'm, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna find it because when I came down there, it's a highway. It's got you see three different highways running along. You see three different sides. You're on three different highways, and you see one merge off to the right, or say like the business loop. You know what okay. I mean? Listen, to what you're saying. There are three different highways running together. Different. Running together, all eight lanes are three different highways. So all eight lanes are three different highways. 
but they're all and individual have, highways. But they're running together for for the, for the sake of time, Mr. Clifton. I'm gonna <laughs> give you one up here where I'm at up in this area. Seventy yeah. and sixty-eight are the same highways. Seventy and sixty-eight are the same highways when you're going through around Morgantown, West Virginia area, coming right. to Cumberland, Maryland area, and stuff like that. There, seventy and sixty-eight. Um, for the sake of uh, uh, uh moving forward, you know, um, um, um that's we're gonna say that. But go ahead, make your point, sir, because I like to hear your point. Uh, what I'm saying is. Those are two individual highways that depend on each other for that certain amount of distance. Okay. Yet and still, they merge off into their own direction. Okay. But for that stretch, for that stretch of highway that they merge together, they're one, right? Um, That's why I disagree. What I disagree with you. You can have four lanes, and it could be four different highways. The one on the far left is, is 826. The one in the middle is 836. This one going to something else. That's not merge. They're four. They're all headed the same direction. If you stay in this lane, it's 826. If you stay in this lane, it's 836. Then they're headed the same direction, but that's truly 826 in this lane. And you'll go down a little farther and, you know, they'll veer off. They're headed north or headed south. Even numbers for interstates go east and west. Our numbers oh, go north and south. Okay. So it's not the same. They're, they, you know, they're, they're independent and... You know, you can get a ticket and be on 836, or you can get a ticket and be on 826, even if they're headed the same way. Those are two separate. Your ticket would be your location. You're on 836 or 826. You know, they can be, and, our, and you know, so if they intersect, they cross over. If they're headed the same direction, they're still separate and distinct. You know, I hear what you're trying to say, but I think you're really taking it, grasping too much. If there's two highways, there's two highways. If there's two highways, if it's one highway, it's two road signs. It's only one highway. It's two road okay. signs. Only one highway now. <laughs> okay, it's so two roads. We, got, we got we got uh we have uh <laughs> how many how many lanes? What what please take me off? How many lanes would that be, Mister Clifton? Those, it could be those two lanes. lanes. It could be two okay. lanes. If, if, if you got a ticket, hey, let me ask you. If you got, let me ask you. Huh? Go ahead. If you got if you got a ticket, would it show your location? From a from a from a trooper, state trooper, would you get? A, would it show your location? Sometimes. Oh man, all of us, all of us. I know they got. Uh, okay, I think you're being a little lifty there. No, little I'm shifty saying, there. sometimes. No, I'm just saying. Okay, uh, all right. Let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. All right, let's just say, you know, for the sake of time, when James said, "What, what highways that were, James? Seven, eight, and six, eight? Yes, sir. All right. Do they get wider or they stay the same? Sometimes when they merge, sometimes they still stay uh, four lanes. They still okay. say two lanes. Okay. okay, I'm going to answer your question, and then I'm going to give you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to tell you about that highway. Okay. Um, when I'm on that highway, it turns in. I'm on 70. It turns into 68, but it's still 70. Wow. It's still 70. Um, but 68, it 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 shares that highway shares a, a a portion of it with two highways share a portion of something, right? Okay, but my GPS is still saying 70. It doesn't jump over to 68. It still says 70. So I continue to go through that, then I get back on 70, and the 68 is going completely. Your point in that is what, sir? <laughs> there, are two, there are two different highways for that period of time. Okay, so you're saying that um, they merge, and then they become back independent, correct? Exactly. That's what you're saying. Okay, so in the relationship, if they merge, when, do they, when are they supposed to become independent? It's not. It's no prescribed time. The only thing I said was that there may be something that she likes to do, you know what I mean, by herself. Not saying that that I don't have to be there, you know what I mean. If okay, if she want to take a a, a a trip, a vacation or something on her own, then that's fine. If she wants me to keep the kids, she take. A, then I should be cool with that. I shouldn't. I'm. You just, it's, only thing. Only thing I'm saying is there has to be compromise to where somebody. That other person still has to be their own individual selves while still being everything I need to me. She okay, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. That's all I'm saying. I agree with you on that. I have some other some other people that John want to speak and Alex want to at least speak. Yeah, let's, yeah. speak this right quick. From the beginning, I said that she has strength that I'm not that, that, that I don't possess, and I have strength that she don't possess. If right. she if she is exercising her strength, that's not being independent. That just means that you are furthering the relationship and you are the leader at that point. That don't mean she has independently broke away from me because she's still working toward the, uh, uh, the common objective of the relationship. 
you know, so even if two highways merge and then break, I ain't going to that day. I'm just saying, even, you know, if she does what she want to do, if she does what she want to do, um, or what she's good at, that's not breaking away because the, the objective is to, or the modest modus operandi, I'm going to say it that way for the criminals, the ones that have been to jail, never changes. Our, our, our scheme of things never changes. What we are trying to accomplish never changes. We just, I may drive for 10 miles, she may drive for 10 miles. I may drive for 10 miles, she may drive for 10 miles. That don't mean the 10 miles she's driving, she's independent, or the 10 miles I'm driving for independent. We are both working toward the same goal. Um, Alex, unmute yourself, please. We're going to come back to you, Mr. Clifton. Uh, Alex, go ahead, sir. How you doing? Hey, so I'm, I'm talking, uh, I'm speaking to both of you guys' point. So, I mean, all in a nutshell, you're talking about the football analogy and you're talking about the, mar the marital analogy. So whether it being 11 people, whether it being two people, you still got role plays. You know what I mean? On, on the field, you still got, just like you said, you got a defensive end, you got a tight end, you got a wide receiver. They still are role players. In a merge, you still got role plays. So this, this, this topic is a catch-22 because independently, if she's driving and both of y'all are driving to the same, the same uh, destination, y'all not sitting in that seat together. Y'all independent, you, you're independently driving. She's independently driving. She may not be going the same speed you're going. She might be going 50 when, 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 the, when the signs uh, clearly states that it's 65. But she, she might not be driving as accurately as you, be, you, you may be driving. But y'all still going to the same spot. But she's independently doing it. But, you know, like, it, that's, that's the only thing. It's in a relationship, you got to have the patience to recognize each other's strengths and each other's strengths may take some, some independent, independent work. You know what I mean? Because independently, if, if she has problems in, within herself, within her upbringing, within, you know, what, what, what background she came from and you in, in that matter, those are, those are independent, uh, views and independent ways that you have to deal with that. You can't ask her to deal with, with your independent background uh, uh, experiences or she can't ask you to, to help her with, with those, those independent background uh, things that she needs working out because she needs to work them out within herself. You know what I mean? That's, those, those are accountability things that she has to work out in herself. She can't, she can't ask you to do something about it which you don't know nothing about, you don't know nothing about her background. So it, independently, she has to work on that or she has to found, find the means to, to tackle those problems. So just because independent is, a, is basically me, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double edged sword. Okay, let me ask you this. What is your definition of independent? Independent is just, just like you said, you got, you got, you know, not dependent on not anybody. You're not relying on others. You're, you're doing not, it you're by not yourself. Rely, you're not, not relying, relying on others. others. Okay, if right. she's working so, on her problem and she goes to a counselor okay. to work on her problems, other than coming to her husband, mm -hmm. is she working on that problem independently? Mm -hmm. Yes and no, because you got to think about it. She took. Is she took? The next, Scott. Took that step. She she took she took that step to better herself. She didn't come to she didn't come to you because that's that, that's kind of like a that's that's kind of bias. Because you, as her husband, not going not going to look at it as an unbiased, uh, unbiased person like a like a psychiatrist. You're not you're not you're not going to look at it as unbiased as a as a as a as a, as a uh, psychiatrist. So independently, yes, she she sought out to go to go seek help for the things that she she's not doing well in her relationship. Okay, I think that so we independently, yes, but. Technically, no. Okay, I think that we need to, uh, first I'm gonna go to Miss Scott, but I wanna throw this in there. I think that we need to get on the same page of what the word independent means. Not saying that nobody says nothing wrong. I just think that we all need to be speaking the same language when it comes to that. Um, Mr. Miss Scott, you're gonna speak. John, you're gonna speak. Miss Love and then Mr. Jones, cause we got a bunch of hands up. Um, I want, you know, that's what I feel that, uh, you know, we just had to get, understand what independent is because I feel like the independent basically is, I'm reading the definition of what they're saying, it, it, you know, Webster said, and they're saying you're, you're not dependent on anybody. So if I go to a counselor, I'm dependent on this counselor's knowledge or whatever it is to help me get past whatever I'm dependent on. So even if I'm, I'm not dependent on my mate, 
I'm still dependent on somebody. And that's so, what I'm getting at. So let, let, let me let, let me make one, one last point before before you move on. Ahead, so think think about this. You know, you know how we 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 are we, we almost the same guy. You wear a bunch of hats, I wear a bunch of hats. But let's say let's say the, the, the toilet the toilet overflow and the ring gone bad on the toilet. Do you expect her to to to, to, to be able to you know help you? You know what I mean? In, in, in that sense, because she knows nothing about that. You barely know anything about it, but you're independently in there. You're gonna oh. ask her to ask you, you, you're gonna ask her to say, baby, give me a uh give me a monkey wrench. You think she knows you think she knows what that is? No, I don't think she knows what that is, but I know I, I know she can be there. I know you do, Lisa, because you you you're a mechanic. So um I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but we can't expect all women to, feel, to, to do that. You know what I mean? Well, uh, everybody does. doesn't know that. No, I, we, don't, we, don't, <laughs> we don't expect her to do that. But what she can do is still, she don't have, I don't mean I have to be independent because she doesn't know. We can both go in that bathroom and I can say, can you pass me that wrench right there with that orange handle on it? Can you pass me that school job? And not that one there, baby, the one with the blue. That, that. So I'm not independent. We still working as a team. So I understand what you're saying. No, I do not expect her to do know my strength. That's my strength. But at the same time, if I go in the kitchen and we're cooking, I'm going to have to lean on her strength. You see what I'm saying? Which means, okay, baby, no, 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 don't get that. Get that seasoning right there. Or, or give me that, give me that knife right there. Not that knife, this knife. You know, so we all have strength that we are, are things that we're good in. And we have to be willing to uh, accept the fact, like you're saying, accept the fact that she's better than me in that. And then let her lead. Lead means we're together still, not independent. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, so let her lead in the area. Go ahead, Miss Scott. First, first, as a therapist, um, I want to I want to just say that there's often times when a couple will come in and need independent therapy, meaning one therapist will work with with the husband, the other therapist will work with the wife, and we will bring them together um, eventually. But but they do both need that independent therapy. But but that's you know that's just my therapy talk <laughs> interjecting here. Um, I've been living on my own for three years now because I have a significant other that is incarcerated. Um, with that being said, I'm a very independent woman. I have to fix my car. I have to fix, fix, you know, when my toilet breaks, luckily I was a plumber's daughter. So I know how to do all that kind of stuff. But, um, as far as what we do as a, as a couple, you know, there are plenty of things that I, I always tend to call it independently dependent because I, I not only have to be independent, but I also have to show the respect of being dependent on somebody. And when that person is incarcerated, it makes it twice as hard um, because they're, they're limited to what they can and can't do. Um, and, and one thing that I always make sure to, to do is include him on decisions, you know, that need to be made. Um, I remind him all the time that he's my rock and he's my strength and that, that, it, you know, he helps me be the independent woman that I am, um, not necessarily needing to depend on a, on a man in my life, you know, not needing to depend on a man's income in my life, um, so I think, you know, and, and the term codependent to a therapist is a lot different, I think, than what you're trying to say, uh, Mr. Jones, as far as a codependent goes, because a codependent to a therapist is, is very, honestly, it's a negative term, um, you know, when, when there's an unhealthy person in the relationship and, and the other person is feeding into that unhe those health, unhealthy behaviors, that, that tends to be the codependency of a relationship. Um, versus I guess I guess I what I what I hear Marie saying you know is is you've got you've got two independent lanes um you know merging together and forming a union uh versus you know versus that dependence um you know and and I think that that's a really good way of looking at you know, you, you do have two independent people who want to hold on to a bit of their independence always, 
because you know they they've grown to be the the independent person that they are but now you're you're merging together forming a union um and i don't know if if that helps at all but like i said that, that that's really kind of where my independence comes in you know i i do i do everything as as a single person um but that doesn't mean i'm a single person um I'm going to say this right quick. Then I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to go with, let John speak because he's been waiting a while. We got a bunch of hands up, so I can't I can't um, just let just monopolize the time. I'm going to say that uh, I understand that uh, everybody, in some form or fashion, is going to has the ability to do things on their own. But I'm saying that if when you become into a relationship, um, then I'm not trying to tell you not to do things on your own. And I, I don't want you to stop doing things on your own because you have strength. You're a different person to me. So you have strength that I don't have. You have knowledge that I don't have. For example, when I first came home, I had to depend on uh, my, uh, my fiance to teach me how to work the phone. You know, um, so that being the case, that's knowledge that she had. You know, so I'm not, you know, so of course, I'm not trying to stop you from being who you are or change who you are. The objective should become one objective now. You know, a brother on here said that it's like the military. Everybody had different posts or different things to do, but it's one common objective that they're trying to reach. And I don't think that if we come to a turn to say we're going to reach a common objective, the same objective, that at any time us going forth and reaching that objective that we become dependent. That's just independent. You know, um, 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 I want to say that uh, Alex, that's on here, he wrote in the comments, independently dependent. You know, um, I understand what you're saying when you're saying that if a bad person's in a relationship, then um, then um, and they're toxic, then it's bad for a person to be codependent of them. But if you have two great people in a the relationship, then what? You know, um, you're looking at it because it's brought to you when the relationship is toxic and they're trying to fix it. You know, so I understand that. I don't think people who have a great relationship and it, uh, are coming to you and say, hey, fix us. You know, so I understand why you, you know, your, your rationale for saying what you're saying. But I'm also a firm believer of there's multiple definitions to work, just to one word. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and, I, and, and um, for example, and I'm going to say this and I'm moving on, use. People say people use people. And that's associated with being bad. To me, that's not associated with being bad. Because jobs, I mean, people use their jobs to make money to pay their bills. Um, um, and, and, the, and the job use people to work for them to make them money. You know, now if I work and you don't pay me, then you're misusing me. That's bad. You know, so I, I've learned that. I'm not, you know, but I, again, I think that we all have to come to an understanding of what the word independent mean and what role does it play. You know, I feel that you being independent, you being independent the way you are right now, at some point, when he comes home, something's going to have to change. You know, Absolutely. Because yeah. you are used to doing it by yourself. Sometimes it's going to be some conflict because unconsciously, you want to do things that you're accustomed to doing all the time by yourself for the last five years, three years, whatever it may be. And he's going to say, no, 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 hold up, baby, put that wrench now. I'm going to go fix that sink. You know, um, that's what's going to happen because you're going to automatically kick into that mode that you're used to. You know, um, and it's just a matter of, like we say, learning each other, learning each other's strength and what and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, thank you for your comment and chime in anytime you want to. But I want to move on because other people have had their hands up for a while. John, can you unmute yourself and go from there? Yes. Um, man, beautiful topic. Um, and I want to say to Mr. Jones that it was ingenious of what you, of you saying with the bringing the uh, analogy of the football team sports period. Uh, and that was the right time for that. And um, also um, about Miss Connie and Lisa, probably the same boat with this significant other that's been incarcerated. Um, the responsibilities has changed, and I think that that's not be, that don't depict that you are independent. It's just that you're just more responsible for more things now because you are in a union. You see, because when he, like you said, when he, when your husband come home. Um, the responsibility is going to change again, you see? And that's that's part of working together. But what I wanted to say is that 
we forgetting that about the the relationship. That's like 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 Mr. Jones said, we got to stick to the, the relationship, our responsibilities and interdependencies and codependencies. And I'm I'm going to my mind, and we all I'm sure we're familiar with the the word of God and stuff like that. We're dealing with one body. We got the arms and legs, the foot, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. We have all these things working independent of his own for, the, like you said, Mr. Jones, for one common cause, you see? And that's why the, no matter what your arm do, you, you, it's, it's independently doing what he can do because my leg, my foot can't do what my hand does, you see? It's working together for a whole. And this, because, and it's like back to the relationship. Just because my wife, she go drive off somewhere, she can drive on her own, independent, but she's doing it for a cause. She's working for us, you see? She can be miles away, but we are a union no matter what, you see? She's my, she might be the leg, I might be the arm. I'm, I'm the head of the household. So my kids, my, my, my wife, you know, my right hand and my, my fingers and all that. You know, I'm just trying to give an analogy, trying to give you understanding because I know Clifford is a man of God, strong man of God. I know that for a fact, you know, and, that, and they use that in the Bible. You know, even Jesus Christ going to use this, not the body, go. Jesus Christ had 12 disciples. You see, now we have a word, a man that was the word of God can do anything he want to do. You see, but he, he showed, he came and demonstrate to us that we thrive off each other. You know, just like Miss Connie speaking, or her husband called her. He, I'm sure he encouraged her to do things that she does. You see, you need that. You're thriving off of that. So that's a dependency right there. You know, so we can't forget these small things. The small things are what matter in these, in these unions, you see? And that, that's why I have to say, I won't, won't go too lengthy on it, but okay. use the body as an analogy. I definitely mm -hmm. appreciate it. And I know that this is going to travel over to next week. I'm going to tell you that now, but I want to say this here because what we, one thing that Ms. Scott brought up that I love is that you know, um, she's doing everything on her own. Um, um, she's doing everything on her own, but when her husband come home, that's where the challenge is going to come because you're used right. to doing everything on your own. And he's not, you know, he's still a man. He's been gone. You know what I'm saying? So he's coming home um trying to fit into something that you already established and then when you're saying hey uh you know I, i've been doing this on and this happens i you know baby i've been doing this on my own for three years don't come back like you're finna change something now or you know i've been doing this since i was 22 years old don't think that you can just come here and tell me this now you know um that's not going that's not healthy to the relationship that's not that's not healthy but we're going to have a discussion about that miss uh miss miss where you at you just jumped around miss love can you unmute yourself and get your comment please Hi, everyone. Hello. How you doing? I'm great. How about you guys? Great. Thanks. So I just want to add, <laughs> in relationship, it is important to be independent because you want to be two whole people, not just uh, to work to come together. So you have two independent people who make a choice to come together and bond together and work as one. I don't have to worry about um, him or myself, because the goal at the end of the day, once we come together, I, we're working together as one. But if I'm comfortable with who I am and he's comfortable with who he is, that doesn't take away from the relationship. That makes the relationship even greater because we're comfortable um, in ourselves. We're not dependent on each other to make each other happy. We're not dependent on each other to make each other anything other than ourselves. And that makes the relationship even more health, healthy because two confident people are coming together and building something. So I think it is important to be independent in a relationship, not losing sight of who you are for someone else because that only brings animosity into the relationship because now somebody feels like they're giving up something to be with somebody or they're giving up who they are to make somebody else happy. So that's my opinion. Um, let me ask you this, Miss, Miss, Miss. I'm gonna ask you two questions. The first okay. question is, what is your definition of independent? For me, independent is being clear on who I am understanding uh, who I am and confident in what I'm doing 
It's not just, you know, I, I could do all of this on my own, but everything about me, you know, I feel that's part of my independence. Okay, so Webster's definition of, of uh, independence is what? <laughs> or the world's ideology or, or definition of independence is what? To you? I don't know. I haven't looked it up. <laughs> um, it says free from outside control, not dependent on another authority, not dependent on another for livelihood or substance. Um, if we are building a house together or we are coming to coming to a, a common goal of we're going to buy a house together. Mm -hmm. um, um, at that point, would it be fair for me not to expect or depend on my wife to come through and do the things that we agree that we are both going to do. If I say I'm going to put this amount of money in, she says she's going to put that amount of money in. Am I wrong for depending on her to fulfill what, what we agreed to? I'm not saying we're not depending on each other. I'm saying that we're confident of who we are yeah, and we're making that. a choice to come together. Yeah, I agree with it's you. always yeah. a choice. But if you, if you say, hey, we're in this relationship and we're going to buy a house, and you're going to give so much, and I'm going to give so much. That's okay. We're coming together and bringing it to the table because we're building something together. Okay, so that's, that's not, not losing who we that. are. Is that independent? If we're coming together and, and doing that, is that or saying we're going to put money in together um, and we're going to do this and we're coming up with one goal for our common objective? Is that independent? Independent, yeah. That's independent. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's, it's independent and dependent. You can be independent and depend on each other to get things done. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, but I think that you should be independent in a relationship. Now, independent doesn't mean that I don't depend on my husband to do things or I don't depend on my you husband. You can't, though. If you're independent, you're working by yourself. So if No, we're, if I'm working by my... I'm not we're ever working by myself when we're That's the definition of independent, not not relying on the, or anybody else. You're doing it solely by yourself. Um, that's the definition of independent. That's not the one I'm making up. That's the one I'm reading in Black Law. I'm reading in Webster's. I'm looking at uh, different things and I'm reading that. So now... I don't you're... believe that that um, that definition is bound to relationships. When we're talking about relationships, we're talking about one whole person and another whole person coming together to join together to be one unit. I'm independently and he's independently coming together and we're making a unit together. We're making a choice to bring our dependence, our independence together. So I don't think that definition applies to relationships. So does it apply to people? The people in the relationship. That's what I, that's what I, that's that's the question I would like to ask you. Not that definition. Okay. Okay. All right. You um is it fair, you know, I, I want to ask you because I don't know what your, your religion is. Um so I'm asking you, what is your your religion? Is it uh uh your Christian? If you mind sharing that with us? I'm non denomination. Okay, okay. Um all right. Well, I'm not gonna take it uh, in a religion uh, standpoint of it. Um I definitely appreciate your comment. Um, <laughs> I definitely appreciate it. You know, um, everybody, it, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, this is what the show is about, breaking different perspectives. You know, um, it was, I don't want nobody just to follow my perspective, but I want to tell you this, Miss Love. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to have a problem, and my <laughs> mate is going to have a problem if she's telling me she's independent. Because she's going to get tired of me telling me to me telling her when she say the trash need to be taken out. Hey, take it See, out. There. That's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about independence. I, I'm, I'm talking what I'm about. Saying. No, I'm just what I'm no. saying. You know, then when she say, "Well, hey, I need you to walk me to the car," I'm and saying, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I don't think it should have to be a titles or something to take out the garbage. I can take out the garbage. I'm not going to wait for you if the garbage yeah. need to be, go out to take Anybody out the garbage. With, but I'm just saying that women. We sometimes we dumb ourselves down trying to build somebody else up. And I'm just saying that we can be independent and you can be independent in a relationship and have a healthy relationship. That's all I'm saying. All right. I, I, okay. I appreciate you coming. I, <laughs> I just don't see it that way, you know, but uh, um, I'm just saying I definitely appreciate you coming and I'm looking forward to hearing more <laughs> of, uh, of your perspective so I can uh, it may change my perspective. 
<laughs> you know, but at this moment, I'm telling you that uh, you can't be an independent in a relationship with me. You can't be that because we are codependent. We're working a team. I'm not going to use the word codependent. I'm going to use that word codependent because we're working together to build something. And, uh, two and, independent. So you're saying that two independent can't. Yes, two dependent people can work together as a team. Um, but once you become a team, you're giving up your 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 your, your um, individual your individual <laughs> at that point. Let me say that you're not you're not you're not working by yourself no more. You're working as a team, so you're not a, you're not a single individual no more. So you know, independent means you're by yourself. So if I decide to come on a team, I'm, I'm I'm relinquishing my right to say I'm by myself. No, I'm I'm not saying that independent means you're by yourself. Okay, I, I, that's my definition <laughs> of it. I, I understand that. So we're not clear on the that. Um, that's why I said before right. the first thing we all need to do is come up with a clear definition because your definition of independence what Wester is saying is not my my idea of independence okay, and, I can, and, I, and that explains um you know your it, it's you know understand why your, your view is different from mine because we have two Absolutely. definitions Absolutely. um that's all that is um i definitely appreciate it and i definitely <laughs> would like to hear that um it, some more on this because this is something that's new to me and this is why i wanted to bring this topic up um, Mr. Parks, um, I'm sorry, you have anything else you'd like to say? Because I've got a couple more people got their hands up. Oh, no, go ahead. Okay, Mr. Parks, can you unmute yourself and give me your, your, your perspective? Unmute yourself first, sir. I'm unmuted. Okay, go ahead, sir. There you go. Let's roll. Listen, I'm chomping at the bit with this one, right? Because uh, I didn't know you could have other definitions. <laughs> I thought the definition <laughs> was what, what was defined in, in the law, in, in the dictionary right but so so what, what everybody is missing the the key word you guys are missing james and you're gonna be mad at yourself when when i say this right it's not codependent that's 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 uh that's not the right term it's interdependent when you get married or you get into a relationship you become interdependent that's two independent people become come together merging like maurice clifton said when you merge you combine you're together there's no more dependence after that so everything you do, you're working towards a goal, and that's in that relationship. Um, like uh, I think somebody made the point in in, in um, home home ownership, right? Um, my wife does things in in the home. I do things in the home. They they aren't uh, like you know they're apart from each other, but there's one goal. It's in that home. It's in in our happy home. So if I go out and cut the cut the grass, and she plants some some flowers it's all we got the same goal the same focus so it's interdependence you know like like so i i really feel like um um the, the word interdependent i mean independent has become too 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 uh too much of a status status symbol for our women oh i'm independent because they had a song and you know i i don't know it's it's independent to me is synonymous with lonely you know you can be independent and be by yourself or you can be interdependent and be in a relationship so if you want to be in, independent, you don't want to be with anybody. Like I'm, like I'm married. I've been married for five years. So, so if you like, I, I don't know what type, what your relationship status is, but interdependence is not going to work in a. I mean, inter independent is not going to work in a relationship. You have to be interdependent. You rely on each other. You so know, you I rely say? on each other, and it takes it takes a lot of pride. Uh, I mean, it takes a lot of um. Yeah, it takes it, it takes a big person to commit to a relationship where you rely on each other and swallow your pride and say look i need my mate you know it's, it's nothing wrong with needing your mate you know like like you're together you you become one person once you, once you once you get married or you commit and you're a committed relationship and and i'm i'm you know i'm speaking from experience so so uh yeah that I, and i've been dying because like every everything has a definition right and you you can't you can't like make the definition fit you you know you got whatever the definition is that's the definition and they do have multiple definitions for the same word but you got to use one of them you know you got to use one of them. you got to select one okay well that's not the definition i was looking for the verb form or i was looking for the noun for form or um you know that's not the word i was i was meaning but you can't just say hey that's not what i mean that's not what it mean to me you know, I mean, I, that's that's my take. 
I, I go ahead, Jay. I see you unmuted. You ready to respond? Oh, so I, I do have let to me say, have, I get no, what you're saying, Mr. Pox. I I've been married 15 years, so I have. I'm speaking on experience myself. So I'm just saying, uh, when I'm saying independent, I'm not saying that I want to be alone. I'm saying that you can have an identity in your relationship. That's independent. We're not expecting them not to have an identity, Miss Love. Again, I'm not he's, saying saying, <laughs> he's saying if my woman is stronger in her than I am, that's her, be, and I'm allowing her to lead in that and expecting her to lead in that area that she's strong in, that's her identity. I'm not trying to smother out who she is. I'm just trying to coexist with the person that I have merged with. You know, so now if I am the plumber, you know, um, I'm going to be the plumber and she has to understand that, hey, I'm going to let him do what he got to do. That doesn't mean she don't come and help me and, hey, baby, pass me down. That, no, no, that wrench right there, the orange one. Or, hey, pass me that screwdriver. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't think that, um, that, um, I don't think that um, we're saying that we don't want the woman to be a woman. You know, because I chose you because of your strength. I accept your weakness. You know, I deal with who you are as a person. You accept me because of my strength, my weakness, and my faults, and all that stuff there. So we're not trying to change anybody. It's about growing. You see what absolutely. I'm saying? Absolutely. I, I absolutely agree. And yeah. that's why I'm saying that people can be independent. And when I'm saying independent, clearly about what they are about for themselves and come together as one. That's what I'm saying. You know, so that's just my opinion. Okay, so um, we I, I, I respect your opinion, but I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> you use the term, you use these words, come together as one. Right. When we're one, how can you be under, if two people are one, how are they independent? When I'm one whole person, he's one whole person, and we come together, we bind them together. Okay, now y'all are one. We're it's one. We're more whole person. We, when we operate person. together, we are one. Okay, y'all are one. I agree with that. I'm agreeing with what you're saying. But you asked the question. The question you asked is, can you operate in, and be independent? And to me, I'm just maybe not agreeing on what um, the definition is. And I'm not trying to okay. take away from the conversation. Okay. I'm just That's saying, okay. uh, in my belief system, this is how I believe that. I think that you can be independent. You can own your own. To me, when I'm saying independent, I own my own business. I do my own thing. He owns his own business. He do his own thing. That's independent to me in a relationship. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at it. I'm glad you said that. It just so happened law is my for, my forte. Okay. So the business that you own, did you establish this business when y'all was married? No. Okay. So that's your business though. But he, did he establish his business when y'all were married? No. Okay. If, if, if. Y'all, you, you establish a business that, that while y'all are married and he's running it, he has no knowledge of it, right? Uh, and y'all decide, whose business is that? By, by the court's ideology, whose business is that? If it was established during the marriage, the life of the marriage, and you run it and he establishes a different business and he runs it, whose businesses are those? And Doing the marriage? Yes. It's both for our business. Okay, so basically y'all the court has seen deemed y'all to have merged. This is the court. This is this is the law saying y'all have merged. So at that point, y'all are not the court don't even recognize y'all as being independent. They recognize y'all as one union and, and whatever you established by yourself during the marriage and whatever he established by itself during the marriage, it's one it, it's, 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 it's community property, which is basically both of y'all are entitled to it even though he never done anything from that and know nothing about that. In my state, in my state, it don't even matter. You can buy a house before I marry you. When we get married, it's our house because of the merger. That's in North Carolina. So every state is different when it comes to real estate, but our real estate laws are set up that when you get married, what is yours is yours and what's, I mean, we, we share everything. So the courts recognize that merger as becoming one person. We're one entity. I can't sell a piece of property right now without my wife's signature. Okay, um, Miss Love, you have anything else you want like to add to that? No. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. Jones, I see you got your hand out. We, we running kind of late, too. This is why I'm kind of speeding up. That's why I said I know we're going to have a take. Mr. Mr. Clifton, I'm going to let you close out, though, sir. Okay, I'm going to talk fast. Uh, I appreciate everybody's comments. I think the word, uh, I appreciate John's comments. I appreciate everybody's comments. But, John, I thought you and Mr. Carlos Sparks, I'm having you back. Um, the word I think that we're really missing is that a, a relationship, a relationship, whether it's a football team or anybody, has terms. And a marriage, one of the ultimate non-blood relationships, meaning you're not blood related to this person, is a marriage. The term is forever. And a football game is 60 minutes. A basketball game is 48 minutes. The physical thing is what you guys are arguing about being independent in. It's different facets of a relationship. It's spiritual. It's emotional. It's physical. You can be physically independent in a relationship. In a marriage, that relationship, you're never independent. Your every move, your every thought should be with some consideration. That doesn't mean that you don't make uh, – independent moves or like the arms, the legs, John, or, or things of that nature. But you're always Miss Jones. My wife is always my wife, no matter what she's doing, no matter where she's at, no matter. So the, she can physically go to the Bahamas. She can physically go to the uh, therapist by herself, but she's always Miss Jones. You know, there's, like I say, different facets of the relationship. The relationship, there's no time out in this here. And a football game is 60 minutes. And for 60 minutes, we're on the same team. So the, the arguments that, or the, the the contentions that you guys give sometimes, Mr. Mar Mr. Clifton or Maurice, you're my brother's brother, so you're my brother, um, is that uh, that's a physical thing, man. She's still my wife. He's still my teammate. Every play, he he plays his own thing. He has a, a a role to play, but in a relationship, you know, it's for the duration of that relationship. And in a marriage, every day in every way, she's my wife. No matter what she does, she represents our relationship. And and my brother Derek, James. The moderator, you, you're trying to be absolute and literal. You know, there's a bit of variance when, and Mr. Parks, when you say this, this lady in the definition, uh, don't be so absolute all the time. Because like I say, she can make a physical independent move, but if she's in a relationship with me, it should bear me in mind. It should be, it's gonna represent me. If, even if she does, my, if my woman's out in the streets fighting or misrepresenting our good name, it's representing me. She's in a relationship. That's 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 offensive to me. That's on me. That's with me. That's and that's what a relationship is. It's more than just the physical. It's the spiritual. It's the mental. It's a, and you can have your own spiritual relationship with God, but it should uh, be something that's favorable for our marriage. You know. So that's your your your, your walk with God. But it should be favorable for our relationship. With, you know. So I think the biggest word is that it's it's different facets or variables, but. Uh, you know, what you guys were arguing mostly, what I'm hearing is that you guys are talking about physical independent moves. You can make all kind of moves, spiritual independent moves, but the relationship, you know, it just it, it never there's no breaks in the in the relationship. So that's pretty much what I'm trying to say, Derek. You know, I definitely appreciate your your comment. Um, I want to say something. Let Mr. Alex say something. Then we're gonna let Mr. Maurice Clifton take us out, and then we'll come back to this next week. Um, uh, go ahead, uh, unmute yourself, Alex. Hello. Yes, we're here. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I, I'm just. I mean, everybody make makes great points, and um, it, it's it's it still it still comes down to a catch twenty two, because if if you really if you really dig deep into the the definition of independent, there's many many variables of that 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 definition, just like um the gentleman that just finished speaking, he said, it's, it's, a, it's a mental, it's a physical, it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those type of things. Like it's different variables of, of that, that term independent. You know what I mean? So it's, it's you know, you, you, you heard of the drink Arnold Palmer, right? Yes, sir. You know about that drink? It's a great drink. It's awesome, but it takes lemonade and tea. They, they, they two independent drinks. That combined as a great drink. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it, it, it's it's different variables. It's different. Oh, but the, the, those are two different, two different two different drinks that that combine as one great like drink. Hey, let me help you out. Then we gonna let Mr. Marvin clip the take out. I'm not disputing with what you're saying. You're absolutely right. I respect everybody's comments. I appreciate everybody can bring in their perspectives and everything. And I want you to get up and come back next week and finish this here. But I want to say this here, right? Um, you got four branches in the military. The military is one word, military. 
that means that's a team or collective effort of different uh, 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 branches. You have the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marines. That's one, those are the four different branches that are brought up to, to, to make up the United States of America's military. So when they say military, they're not just speaking of the Army, they're not just speaking of the Navy, they're not speaking of nothing. Now, when we go to war, each different branch does something different. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, all of them are working on the same common objective. They, they now, and, and, and I, I try to stay away from this word because I've learned that some people hold on to words. In the court of law, words mean everything. So you have to watch what you say. In the world, words mean everything. So you have to watch what you say. I'm saying that everybody is, you know, the, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marines work in concert for one common objective. You see what I'm saying? So that doesn't mean that, and they are known as the United States military. You know, um, so, you know, we can do different things, but that don't mean that we're independent. You see what I'm saying? Because independent means I'm not dependent on the the, the, uh, the Air Force to come and bomb the, the land before the before the um, the Navy or the, or the Army come onto the land. I'm not dependent on, you know, the Air Force to drop them bombs and clear the way for me. So at the end of the day, even though because we are working together, we ha all have different goals and uh, uh, tasks that we have to do in order to accomplish that one goal. And that's the only thing I'm trying to say. You know, I, um, you know, and I agree with Mr. Jones earlier when he said relationship. We're looking at physical things, but when you are out, um, um, when you, my wife is out, or my, or, or I'm out, or or someone's husband is out. You never are not independent. You're never independent at that time because when it comes back that you've done something wrong, they're going to say that's Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones' wife over there that's doing that, or that's Mr. Mr. Esteem' wife that's doing it, or Mr. Clifton' wife that's doing that. You know, because you are because you're not with me doesn't mean that you are independent at that moment. I can't tell them, oh, she wasn't my wife at that moment. She was independent. We were, you know, that she was doing all independent. I can't say that. Now, with that being said, you know, that's just my thoughts. Uh, Mr. Clifton, can you take us out, please? And, uh, definitely look for. Hello. Yeah, we hear you. We hear you, sir. Yeah, I think everybody has some outstanding points, man. I don't think I don't see it as us arguing anything. I just mm -hmm. iron shop is iron, and everybody forming their own opinion. Everybody's going to always. I try to be mindful and tell people, everybody, everybody is going to give an opinion based on how he or she lives. But I also think that that we can't because uh, a sponge absorbs water, the sponge and the water are different. You know what I mean? They're different. It's going to be hard until that water comes in. It's going to soak up all the water. But there's, you got the sponge, you got a wet sponge, but you still got two different entities. You got the water and you got the sponge. I just think that we, we can't, we can't uh, expect our significant other to become different, saying because when we or be apart from who they were before we met them, I just think that that's a uh, you know us that's a recipe for disaster when we try to box them in because then we smother them and we change them we begin to change them. If she comes in, if, you know, like me, I don't have a problem because like I, I fell in love, if, you know, you know, with, with my girl for who she was. If she wants to have her own bank account. I don't even want to discuss that. I want to discuss how we can become financially uh, literate and independent. Whether she keeps her bank account, I keep mine, or whether we merge them, it doesn't even matter. It's not. It's not a big deal to where I'm going to lose the love and respect that I have for her because it's something small and you know in the hill of beans. You know, I just think that we have to, uh, uh, like uh, Lil Jones said, stop taking things so literally. That's big Jones. I'm Lil Jones, sir. Okay, Big John. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, you know, it's just, it's just like the real bitches center. You know what I mean? It's got three different, you know, even though we're one tree, you still got breaking silence, you still got sale with sipping, we still got, to, you know, your endeavors that you're doing on your own. But we come together here tonight and we make it big. You know what I mean? But even though, you know, when I'm here and when Lisa's here, we're the real bitches center. Even when I go out as sale, as, as, as sale I'm taking the real business center with me and I mention them in everything I do. Right. You know what I mean? Why? Because I've been grafted. I've been grafted into the real business center. So once I'm grafted into that, there's no way I can be sailed with Sipping without being breaking silence, without being 
the reinvention center. And just like everybody that comes on here that with us, even though they have their own independent thing, like Mr. Parks, uh, uh, Boosie, uh, John and everybody, Jay Love and everybody, even when they come here, they're grafted into the reinvention center because we know people are watching us and we're growing and we're getting bigger and we're getting stronger. So I just think that, uh, we, but we all do everything. Jay does her thing independently. John does his thing independent with his podcast. Carlo does his thing independent. But when we come here, we're this big old reinvention center and we're going to get bigger because they're going to tell everybody about us, man. Great topics, man. Hopefully somebody can come up. Anybody want to volunteer for the Black History intro next week? Good job, John. I, I appreciate you. Yeah, give us, give <laughs> hey, us something. Uh, out we need you to volunteer. Yeah, we need oh. you, man. Y'all give them a round. Get with y'all on. Yeah. <laughs> get with y'all on that. I, I want to read I, a comment. I want to read a comment Miss Love said, and I definitely agree with this, Miss Love. One thousand percent. You need to have goals for ourselves independently, meaning you know, and goals for our relationship. Um, I definitely agree with that um, wholeheartedly. I don't, and I think that we are misconstruing um, what we mean by the word independently. I'm not trying to change who, who anybody. I want yeah. to become who you are. Bring to the table what your skill set is. That's why I chose you because I am lacking or I, I, I accepted you for who you are. I'm not going to say lacking in that area because I might know the same thing, you know, and then, but there's going to be times you know more than I know. All I want you to do is just come and bring what, what you bring to the table. Together, as Miss 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 Love says, if we can you you can go out and learn other things by yourself to bring back to the table for, for that'd be good for the household or for the relationship. So I definitely agree with your um with your, your comment, Miss Love. You know, there's no question that we have to do things on our own because she may go to school and, and to learn a trade or do something that helps the, the, the cause. And I may go to school and learn something different. So we're doing things separately, you know, um, but it it, it, it it helps. It helps in one thing. And I, you know, I wanted so bad to bring in what you said, Mr. Mr. Ekim, about the head. You know, um, it's you know the arms, the legs, and the, and the feet, and all that stuff there. I wanted to bring it in, but I'm not trying to bring it. So I'm gonna bring it in this way without religion. The arm don't move without the brain saying say move. The leg don't move without the thing say move. You know, so nobody, no part of your body is independent of independent period because they all work in conjunction. You know, um, that's just my thoughts. You know, but we will see each other next week, same time, same place, and um. Same place. Same message, you know, so please break it to us. Thank everybody for it, you know, and, um, you know, um, I, 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 I look forward to seeing y'all next week. Thank you. Great, great Good show. Night. Good night. Good night.